Which bike should you get in 2023? The Talaria Sting R MX4 or the Saran Light BX? I'm glad you asked. All right, so before I get started, I just want to make one thing very clear. I'm not affiliated with Talaria. I'm not affiliated with Saran. I purchased this bike with my own money. This is my honest opinion, and this is how I arrived at my choice. Just to give a little bit of backstory, I've been drooling over Saran since they came out. I've always wanted a Saran. I've ridden my friend's Saran's at the track. They're a blast. A couple weeks ago, uh, I actually pulled the trigger and ordered one on Lunacycle. I ordered the 2023 Light BX with the new 38 amp hour battery and it cost me $43.50. Three days later, I see Saranster's video on the new Talaria Sting R and instantly kind of felt this pit in my stomach like uh oh i might uh i might have messed up here luckily and very luckily i was able to contact lunacycle and cancel my order and get refunded for the saran x before it even shipped out and i was able to place an order for a talaria sting r and was lucky enough to get one of the first batch shipments from lunacycle since I placed my order with Lunacycle, I checked on their website and now the Talaria Sting R as well as the 2023 Saran X Lite B are the same exact price. So I made this decision when this bike was still $150 more and it was still a no-brainer. Now the bikes are the same price and I think it's even more a clear decision of which bike to buy. But the number one thing that sold me on this bike the very, the ultimate number one thing that made me decide that this was the bike that I wanted to go for was this right here. Oh man, it, it, it feels like it's already been upgraded. It's even more powerful than when you put the uh, 66 volt tri battery into the Suron. That gives the Suron about a 20% boost. This is supposed to be 30%. Wow, and it feels like it. So. That alone is what sold me on the Talaria Sting R. You would have to spend 2300 extra dollars on a Saran just to have it not be as powerful or as fast as a stock Talaria. How does that make sense? Even if you could sell your stock Saran battery for $1,000, which you can't because I just bought a used Saran battery and charger on eBay for 500 bucks, which I have big plans for that. Stay tuned. Um, it's still still a thousand dollars more and not as fast how can you justify over a thousand dollars more for a bike that's not as fast that alone is what sold me on this bike now let's get into the other stuff that's better about it i like the display much better on this bike i like the modes and the tunability you can do with it there's actually a setting inside of it for 17 inch wheels 19 inch wheels and five different gearbox settings which i haven't even touched yet I'm looking to try to figure out how to do a video of getting the max top speed out of this as well as max torque using those settings i don't know i gotta experiment bar ends on the grips here i like these more than just having the rubber bar ends you're going to lay the bike over you're going to scratch them up or whatever you're going to put the bars right through your grips with these you know you might scuff the paint a little bit but your bars are going to be okay and you're going to ride on this bike comes stock with a peg brace Sarans don't come with that that's a 20 dollars part this bike has a bigger battery a 45 amp hour battery everybody's also been talking about the new ipm motor but what the heck is it ipm stands for interior permanent magnet and basically the way that these motors work on the inside is there's a coil winding with a rotor that's spinning around with magnets on it previous versions of these motors had the magnets placed on the outside and in doing this it's cheaper to manufacture but they're subject to flying off over time due to centrifugal force. This new motor, the interior permanent magnet, is on the inside side of the rotor, so that no matter what, it can't fling off due to centrifugal force. It's stuck on the inside permanently. I think this is a much better design, and I think that it's gonna handle the higher power upgrades much better than the old stock motors from either the Saran or the MX-3 Sting. The other thing that makes this bike better than the Saran is the oversized brakes. This bike comes with 220 millimeter rotors, Saran comes with 200. If you look on Lunacycle's website, it costs 50 bucks a rotor to upgrade. So there's a hundred bucks difference right there again. Also, it comes with a peg brace. That's 20 bucks on Lunacycle's website. This bike comes with it stock, Saran does not. This bike also comes with a wider back rim at 1.6 versus a 1.4 and a little bit beefier back tire. And I gotta say, I think another strong point on this bike over the Saran is the suspension. The Talaria factory fork as well as the rear shock seems to be the latest and greatest in these like hybrid mountain bike suspensions, albeit not my favorite. I do think it is better than the Saran. It's basically 
Anything Saran can do, this bike can do better. But what about the weight? The Saran only weighs 120 pounds and that weighs 145. Like I said before, this bike comes with oversized rotors, a larger back wheel. We're also dealing with a bigger 45 amp hour battery. We're dealing with a higher quality motor with higher quality internals, which I'm sure have more weight on the inside. We're also dealing with a bike that comes stock with a peg brace, which Saran does not have. So if you were to take a Saran and spec it out with all the upgrades that the Telaria comes stock with, I think the weight difference would be fairly negligible. So there you have it guys. There's my two cents. I think it's pretty clear who the winner is here. If you want to keep the bike stock and for the same price, I don't see how anybody in their right mind wouldn't go for the Telaria Sting R over the Saronics in 2023. If this video helped you guys out in any way or provided any value, I would greatly appreciate it if you could drop a like. Also, make sure you subscribe. I've got a $30 upgrade coming in the mail today that I think we may be able to see speeds of over 60 miles an hour on the Sting. That video will be dropping tomorrow, Wednesday at 4.20 Eastern Standard Time, so make sure you subscribe so you can see it when it drops. Thank you guys again. I really do appreciate it. This has been a blast, and uh, until next time, peace.